morning it's me Allie with postpartum mom channel um, this channel if you haven't ever visited before is all about things related to um, postpartum journeys including parenting foster care adoption and in this case surrogacy as I said before in my other videos at this point I am I think almost 13 weeks pregnant as a gestational carrier. I really don't really keep track of it, but I think I'm around 13 or 14 weeks pregnant at this time. Um, welcome back to those of you who have seen some of my other videos. I hope that you're enjoying my content so far. Uh, today, I just want to take the chance and ask a hypothetical question and just throw out some questions that I get asked on a pretty frequent basis by people who are not really well versed in the world of surrogacy. And of course, I'm not saying that anyone's intentions are bad, but it's just sometimes comical um, to hear the questions that people ask. So one of the questions that I get asked is, don't you think you'll be emotionally attached to this baby when after you're giving birth? And there's a short and a long answer to this, but for the short answer, no. And have there been instances when surrogates do overstep that line or that boundary and do become emotionally attached? Yes. I think the chances of that happening is possibly a little bit higher in traditional surrogacy, which means that a woman uses her egg and donor sperm and then gives this child to the parents, um, the intended parents. So that to me would be a little bit more difficult probably because that child could look like me, right? That child could share some of my features. Uh, the child would be genetically mine, essentially. It would be uh, my biological offspring and I think that that would make it a lot more difficult to hand over to intended parents but I have uh, met several traditional surrogates online and they seem very secure about their decision they don't seem very um, emotionally scarred or traumatized by the experience especially knowing that the amount of investment in time and finances and emotions that these intended parents put into this process and into this dream of having a child and, and building their family I think that makes it easier for you to want to help them as a surrogate even as a traditional surrogate realizing that that child is not going to be in a bad environment most likely these parents have gone to great lengths to undergo this whole process so this child is likely going to be in good hands and with a loving family that's what we all hope right of course there's going to be exceptions um, but for the most part I think in those cases children are at least in an environment where they're financially stable and the parents are typically emotionally stable as well so do I get attached did I get attached how did I feel when I gave birth to the surrogate child, surro baby is what we call them, or woo mate, um, in May of 2016. Did I get attached? No, not at all, because I, I remember the whole process. I, I went into labor around 4.30 in the morning, and I'm going into the hospital around 7.30 because I had to drop my son off to daycare. So I labored at home for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and I was ready to go into the hospital. Went into the hospital. Um, and of course, before I went to the hospital, I messaged the intended parents that I was in labor. I was sure I was in labor because of how close the contractions were together. I went in, um, they checked me. I was only at like three centimeters. So I waited a little bit longer and I continued to progress to four or five. So at that point they, they gave me a bed and, um, by the time, before I even got a bed, the intended parents were there. They were supporting me. They were getting something to eat from Subway. Um, you know, it was, it was a very calm experience. I labored for, um, about, uh, I'm going to say like 10 hours. 
additionally and I was still at six centimeters so at around one or two in the morning I decided to get the epidural I after that point I was knocked out until about eight or nine o'clock in the morning and I woke up to a Foley being a Foley catheter being placed and them saying that I was pretty much ready to push I was at nine or ten centimeters they were ready for me to push so um, at that point I literally pushed probably for a good 20 minutes because I couldn't feel anything. So this wasn't a quick pushing session. And then um, then the baby came out and they allowed the intended parents to hold the baby first, I believe. And um, that's what I had asked for them to do. And then they handed the baby to me. And I, um, you know, I held this baby for a while and I spoke with the parents and, and they of course kept holding the baby and saying, oh, she's so cute. And um, again, I still never felt any attachment. I still felt more like a babysitter or like a distant family member. There was like a love, right? There's like a love for children generally. Like when you see children out at the park, you're like, oh, she's so beautiful. And if, if a child scrapes their knee, of course you run over to them and you help them up and, and you ask them where their mommy is and or their daddy and you know you do that but um and then while we were in the hospital technically the adoption meaning their adoption of her had not taken place yet because she came from my body legally I have to stay with her in the hospital until I discharge and so I was able to get them a separate room in the hospital that they were able to stay in I don't even know how we did that and um so they actually went to parenting classes in the hospital and asked me to watch her. So I watched her, I nursed her, um, took care of her, and of course I was exhausted. So it wasn't even a matter of um, wanting to do it. It was more like, of course, I'll help out as much as I can. And then I discharged before they did. She stayed in the hospital a little bit longer. I forget why. And um, it wasn't because of any complication. They just were kind of wrapping up the discharge. I left. I did my thing. They stayed at the hospital. I continued to, to give them milk, meet up with them and give them milk. And then for the next three weeks, I, I met up with them and gave them milk um, that I was pumping. And after about three weeks, they went back to the Bahamas. Even then, I have sent them milk, shipped them milk. Never was there... A period of time where I thought to myself, I wish that baby were with me. Never was there a period of time where I felt sad or down or questioned doing the surrogacy at all. The child was with her intended parents. The child was with her rightful parents. So it didn't even feel foreign to me at all. Uh, the child was Caucasian or mixed. It was It was a mixed child. And the child looked nothing like me. So it was, it was very easy for me to like not have that type of uh, bond. Uh, we had a bond in that I carried her for the nine or ten months. But not the same bond that I have with my own biological children. Or even my adoptive um, daughter. You know, even her. I had her from three weeks. I felt, I feel a bond with my daughter. Like there's no way I've, there's a different instinct there because I was with her since she was three weeks. I got her directly from the NICU and my daughter is my daughter. You can't tell me any different. It's, and when people ask me, are you her real mom? Yes, I'm her real mom. I am her real mom because I've, I've been with her the whole time. The entire time I took her home from the hospital. So, um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, no, there's not an emotional attachment. I think sometimes if you, if you lose sight of the goal, of the whole arrangement and the whole um, role, you can um, have emotions that are, I don't know if I would say inappropriate, but kind of misplaced. But when you think about it, especially if you're a gestational carrier like I am and the child has no biological connection to you whatsoever, it's easy to just say that you're helping to take care of this child for a short period of time and to um, give this child to its rightful parents. And it's kind of a relief to do so because after this pregnancy, after gaining all this weight, after going through all the injections and the pills and, and the other medications and the doctor appointments and driving long periods 
of time to go to all these different things, I think it's a relief that I don't have to stay up at night taking care of a baby or a new infant. I can take care of my kids, but they're the ones who have the fun of experiencing all of that wonderful stuff, waking up every few hours at night. I'm perfectly fine with somebody else having that opportunity to enjoy. So anyway, I hope that answers your question. I will be posing additional hypothetical questions in the future, and I hope you like this content. Thank you, and let me know if you have any additional questions.